Welcome to Tutorial 3, Part 2. Today, we continue to build a circuit that can be used to automatically generate truth tables for two input gates. Next, on Binary Tutor. We are almost done with the counter portion of the project. The last remaining issue takes us back to the oscillator. By default, the oscillator produces the fastest possible pulse stream. Multimedia logic supports. However, not all circuits can work at that speed. Consequently, we need to manually set the pulse stream to a slower value for this project to work properly. We do so by double clicking on the oscillator gate. This dialog allows us to set the duty cycle of the oscillator. For our purposes, a value of 8 cycles low and 8 cycles high will work nicely. The counter portion of the project is now complete. We now go back to the first page to add a couple of indicator LEDs. Test the next button. The A and B LEDs change as expected. Now we can test the All button. However, even at the lower rate we set the oscillator gate, it will still be too fast to see. Fortunately, Multimedia Logic has a way of slowing the whole circuit down to a rate that will permit us to see what is going on. First, stop the simulation. Go down to the simulation rate, click the specify radio button, and enter 50 hertz. Now restart the simulation, click on the all button and hold it down. Notice how the LEDs flash automatically even though I am holding the all button down. Now that the counter and user interface controls have been completed, it is time to turn our attention to the recorder subsystem of this project. What we need is the ability to store just four bits of information, the output of the gate under test, and to display that data. Flip-flops are ideal for this application. Multimedia Logic happens to support a variety of different flip-flops from which to choose. To conserve time, we shall look exclusively at the style which will be most suitable for our current purposes. We will address them more thoroughly in an upcoming tutorial. As before, the first step is to put a flip-flop on our canvas. Double-click on the flip-flop to bring up the Properties dialog box. Click on the Master Slave Data Latch radio button. Click on OK. Let's wire it up and experiment with it. Start the simulation. Notice how the output LEDs are hatched. This is because Multimedia Logic starts flip-flops in an unknown state. The flip-flop will remain in that way until your circuit changes it via its inputs. Clicking on the D push button doesn't change the state, but clicking on the C push button does. Whenever the clock input of the master slave data latch goes from a 0 to 1, the state of the D input is transferred to the Q output, while the not Q output is always the inverse of the Q output. Let's click on the D push button again. 
Notice how nothing changes. Watch what happens when the C input goes from 1 to 0. Again, nothing happens. However, changing the C push button from 0 to 1 is expected to cause the D input to be transferred to the Q output. And it does. Because there are four combinations being fed to the input of the test gate, we will need to make three more of these flip-flops. We can do so simply by copying and pasting them. We will also add the test gate with its output signal sender. Now it is time to connect the output of the test gate to the input of the recorder flip-flops. We will do so by using one signal receiver and the node device. The node device provides a convenient tie point for multiple wires. We will now move these flip-flops to page 3 of the project. We will use signal senders and receiver pairs to transfer their output to page 1 later. The last piece of the puzzle involves triggering the clock inputs of the four recorder flip-flops at the appropriate time. One quick way to do so is to use the 2 input to 4 output demultiplexer device. Multimedia Logic has many multiplexer styles to choose from. Double click on the default style device to get the multiplexer properties dialog box. Click on the 2 to 4 DMUX radio button and close the dialog. The E input must be driven with a ground device. The S1 and S0 inputs are driven by the same A and B signals as the test gate. Add some LEDs, and we are ready to experiment. After starting the simulation, click on the Next button. See how the LEDs flashed one after another as the A and B input LEDs changed. This is exactly what we need to drive the flip-flop clocks. We'll move the multiplexer to the flip-flop page and wire it in. Thank you for watching my videos. If you like them and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button located on the right side of this page. On YouTube, the more subscribers, the better, so please encourage your friends to sign up as well. Also, if you have suggestions for topics you'd like to see in future Digital Logic videos, please drop me an email at jlarson43 at juno.com or post a comment on YouTube. If I use your idea, I'll credit you in the video. Until next time, have a great day.